Welcome. On tonight's chat room, we have as our guest John Cocking, and in his other guise, Bertie from uh, from Art Deco Trust Weekend, whose name is Clarence Bertram St. John Fitz Montague. N not quite St. John. It's no. actually pronounced Sinjin. Sinjin. So, Sinjin. So it's Clarence Bertram St. John Fitz Montague. Okay, well, that's from my colonial background. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, can, we, can, we can give you a little space there, I think. And as it's our upcoming uh, Art Deco Weekend, we'll sure. really start with Bertie. Yes, indeed. So, Bertie, how did you become the ambassador for the Art Deco Trust? Well, gosh, I, they, they asked me to, to provide a character. This is way back in the, oh, crikey, the early 90s, uh, for a particular event, which was a celebration of something, and they, they held a, a tea dance, and could I provide a character? I was already working as a volunteer uh, for the Trust on the Art Deco Weekend Committee, and because of my theatrical background, they wanted somebody to give a little more theatre. So experience. were you a professional actor at that yes, time, Yes, I was Birdie? a professional actor at the time, yes. 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 And, um, and, and uh, so they said, could you provide a character? Well, leaning very heavily on uh, uh, Mr. Woodhouse's, or Wodehouse, I the Americans pronounce it. Woodhouse, uh, no, we pronounce it Woodhouse. Oh, do you? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, it, I got some bags and a, and a boat and a, and a blazer and off I went. And I thought that's quite jolly, I, in, I enjoyed that. And if you're an actor like that, what you do, you tend to put those, as it were, put them in a box and say, yes. if I ever have to do that again, I know exactly what it, what it looks like, where it came from, what, what it can do. Um, and at the time I was playing, uh, one of the things I was doing was playing Charlie Chaplin professionally. And uh, I had a little piece written about me in the Sunday Star Times. And the lady rang me, perhaps I shouldn't say who she is because she might still be alive. Um, anyway, um, and she said, you know, have you ever picked the phone up and somebody, you know, somebody starts talking to you as though they, they've just stopped a conversation? Uh, and anyway, this lady said, uh, oh, yes, hello. Didn't even say hello. Said, My husband used to play Charlie Chaplin. Oh, really, says I. Um, he's dead. I said, well, Charlie's been dead for some while. He said, no, no, my husband's dead. Oh, sorry. And would you like his clothes? Oh. And so, and you think, well, gosh, you know, <laughs> I'm a poor actor. But yes, I do. And I went to this place in um, a suburb. I shouldn't mention this place. And I knocked at the door. And I never met this lady. All I saw was a hand with a parcel in it. Wow. And I took the parcel and the, the door slammed like that. And where was she living? I'm at not that saying. Time? I mean, that's <laughs> Just we in case she's still, she's alive. still alive. Exactly. Anyway, I took the stuff home and it was a morning suit. That's morning as in daytime. As opposed um, to morning as in grieving. Exactly. Um, the sort of thing you go to Ascot in, you know, striped trousers, grey waistcoat, short tailcoat. Very nice. Yes. And the guy was, uh, husband was obviously a very handsome man because he fitted me perfectly. So I thought, gosh, he must have been really. Well, nice. I read a little so, bit, Bernie, that you had lost a lot of weight because you were ill and then you became a bodybuilder. Yep. Is that true? Was that about the same time that you started playing this character? Uh, yes, it was actually. It was at, right at the end of the 90s. Uh, previous to that, I was an uh, amateur cyclist. And so we were always pretty small, but I, I got very ill uh, and lost a lot of weight. Um, and so my doctor said, don't go back cycling, go to the gym to build yourself up. And I, I've been going to the gym for many years now, but it, I've been a competitive bodybuilder for six, seven years. You look pretty amazing. We're Gosh. not going to let anybody know how old you are, so <laughs> we're just, we're going to let them guess. We're going to leave that to the <laughs> well, imagination. my proudest moment, I've got two very proud, if you're going to talk about it, I've got two very proud moments with that. One uh, was winning uh, the national bodybuilding um, over 60s. Uh, um, so I was national champion in 2012. Um, That's pretty amazing. So talk a little bit about, I know when I lived in Dunedin, that was very big at Les Mills, there were all these bodybuilders. Yes. So you have to go on this big regiment where you only eat like chicken breast and broccoli, <laughs> and then you have to oil yourself down or yes. go for tans and it, yes. it, pump it, yourself up. Uh, yep, all of that and more, <laughs> yes. Um, at the time, I would probably work out uh, 10 times a week. Uh, twice a day for four days and, and once a day for two days and one day off. Um, as you say, most of your food was high protein, low carbohydrate. So you ate a lot of chicken uh, and broccoli um, and uh, salmon, tuna fish, uh, that, that sort of thing. No pastas, no breads, no potatoes. Unbelievable. Um, I know it is. Uh, for a man who's a real steak and potatoes guy, it really, it <laughs> really, really was hard. So and I, 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 I love the working out. I can do that all the time. And I disliked the um, the, the dieting. So, but congratulations! That's Thank you. I was the other highlight. I was actually chosen for the New Zealand bodybuilding team. Um, 
I know, it's amazing, isn't it? And we went to Rarotonga. They, they have these competitions in the most fabulous places. Um, I didn't get anywhere. I think I came seventh in my group. But it but was lovely. To, it was lovely to to, to and do a that. great trip. Oh yes. So let's go back to Birdie now. So, Birdie, Birdie would never go to the gym. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Unless he's to exercise his right arm, you know. So, yes. <laughs> so let's go back. It's upcoming Art Deco weekend. Sure. You know, it probably brings. Do you have any idea, Birdie, how many people it brings to the region? Oh gosh, it's always difficult to say, but we we usually estimate somewhere between fifteen and twenty thousand. That's a lot. And it is. where was the genesis? Who came? You know, who decided? Okay, we're going to have an Art Deco weekend. Well, the the Art Deco group, as they call themselves, came to trust. Uh, it was, uh, Which you're a member of. Oh yes, I've uh, been a member since crikey, ninety one, ninety two, somewhere around there. Um, they decided that they needed something, uh, as you say, a not too serious celebration. They called it of the Art Deco um, style. And so in 1989, they started their first one. This will be our 26th incarnation this year. Um, and they just want to have a bit of, bit of fun with it. Uh, and that's actually why I was invited to the, to the Trust as a volunteer, to give them a, a little bit more, say, theatrical uh, work with that. But on the original Art Deco weekend in 1989, um, they had seven events over two days. Uh, and two of those were, were cinema and one was an exhibition. So there wasn't much happening. Um, and they uh, had 14 vintage cars arrived. And, and they had, uh, and they sold about $2,000 worth of tickets. Just to give an idea, uh, obviously we don't know quite what the weekend's done this year because it's um, a few days away still um, for the finish. Uh, but we will sell over 4,000, for sorry, big sign. Four hundred thousand dollars worth of tickets. Um, we will have three hundred cars. Uh, we will have, oh gosh, over a hundred events, and about a third of those are free. And tell us um, the highlights. For the highlights for whom? For everybody has different everybody highlights. Everybody has a different highlight. If you're a car person, it's the cars. If you're a for train person, for the people who haven't been, which is hard to believe, the yes, people in the Hawks Bay wouldn't have been there. The cars go through the center of town. Yes, the, the cars are there all day. We close the uh, uh, Marine Parade between 5.30 Friday and 5.30 Sunday. And basically, the whole of that strip is vintage cars for most of the weekend. But the, the highlight for the car people is the car parade, uh, which happens uh, at 12.30 on Saturday, uh, where we go up Emerson Street, basically, uh, and around, and then park uh, along the parade. And we have to limit that, from the trust point of view, to 250 cars. Uh, because the council, God bless them, only allow us uh, an hour where we can close everything, otherwise the whole town stops. And it, it takes us about an hour to get 250 cars through. Anyway, we have to go for a break. So when okay. we come back, Bertie, we'll also talk to John Cocking a little bit about his political life. I, I'll see if I can find him. Okay, see if you can <laughs> find him. In the, <laughs> we'll be back in chat room in a minute. Welcome back to chat room. We're speaking with Art Deco Birdie, also known as John Cocking. And uh, Art Deco Birdie is going to tell us a little bit more about the story he started, which didn't finish, about the parcel he got from the hand that came out of the door, <laughs> which didn't really have Charlie Chaplin clothes. No, it wasn't. It, when I got it home, it was a morning suit, to say, a, a morning as in daytime. And I, I rang the lady back and said, gosh, you know, you're giving me the wrong suit. Some, some poor chap's gone to Ascot dressed as Charlie Chaplin, and here I am. Uh, and I said, no, my husband used to do that, Charlie Chaplin. That. Well, thought, maybe, she, maybe she was expecting somebody else. Maybe so. Maybe somebody else got the Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie Chaplin now. <laughs> anyway, I tried it on and thought, gosh, no, it won't do for Charlie at all. But it does remind me of another character I've been doing. It's Bertie. So what should I do with it? So I had a top hat, doesn't everybody, uh, and some spats. So I put all this on and thought, look, rather grand. What should I do? I'll just walk in the street and see what happens. Uh, which I did, and it happened to coincide. It was a, it was a, a Saturday lunchtime uh, in the summer, and it would I didn't know at the time it was the very first visit to cruise ship here, the old Marco Polo, and there were a lot of which came from where I'm not sure where it came from Wellington to here I think, but there were a lot of colonials uh, in in the like town me. just like you, <laughs> and and they were fascinated by this character. And I thought this would work, and and you learn all sorts of things. Did you know that if you walk in the street dressed in a funny hat, people think you know where the toilets are? It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and I thought I could be a sort of walking tourism office. And that's, that was the birth of the Bertie that we see now. I mean, that, that, that outfit was too much. So we were, I went back to the Blazer and Boater. Uh, and then for 
quite a long time. I just did it in the street whenever I could. So you were there. first Bertie, and then you got involved with the Art Deco Trust? No, Art Deco Trust, then Bertie. Art Deco Trust, then Bertie. Yeah. Okay, so and you've seen the evolution of this oh, Art sure. Deco. We can becoming an international Absolutely. event. Um, and you know, people comparing Napier to South Beach, Beach Miami, Miami yep. in terms of its Art Deco architecture. Yep. So, well, I just want to talk a little bit more about the 2014 weekend. Sure. About the Great Gatsby. If there's a play that's going to be a play, the Great Gatsby. I've already seen it. Very good. It is. Very good. Um, a, an amazing thing to take on because it's a huge production. And especially after the movie, after the y yes, the Baz Luhrmann yes, movie. yes. But it's very well done. Excellent. Um, so, and that's an American, actually. Is if he I have really? To say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, I do believe he is. I go to I go to high schools and I talk about Fitzgerald. Oh, really good. Do. Yeah, because yes. I I have. A personal acquaintance with America. I, I could I imagine do. that, yes, Donnie, you're well travelled. Um, but yes, um, but it, it, like every other weekend, we have a whole variety of stuff. So there's theatre, there's film, there's dining, there's picnics, there's d d religious services, uh, trains, cars, aeroplanes. Steam trains. Steam trains, yes. And then there's an opera this year. An opera too, yes, yes. In the, yes. In the uh, again, era. Marriage of Figaro, but set in the Art Deco era. Yes, it is. I'm in the choir. Oh, oh and really? And they're dressing us all like Louise Brooks. <laughs> So it's pretty, pretty cool. Indeed, yes. And uh, it's excellent, you know. And so when did people start dressing in Art Deco to come here? Did that always happen? Uh, we find it evolved, and there's lots more than there used to be. Um, but I would say certainly for the last 15 years, it's been huge. Uh, I've seen that growth. Uh, whereas uh, at one time, if you spotted somebody in a stripy blazer and a boat walking down the street, it was, wow, or a girl in a lovely uh, drop-waisted dress or whatever, uh, but now, if you walk down in jeans and a, and a sweatshirt, you feel out of it. You, you, you know, you're you really in, in the minority. Yeah, you really do. It's almost like Mardi Gras. Yes. In the yes. sense that everybody just gets dressed up and becomes someone else. It's really lovely. And it's amazing how freeing that is. Okay, a lot of inhibition goes. I don't mean people go mad. But if I wanted to speak to you in the, in the street and you were nicely dressed and I was just in... in today's clothing. If I came to you as a complete stranger, man to woman, and said, gosh, I, love, I really love your dress, you'd be taken aback somewhat uh, and perhaps a little suspicious, you know, but if you do it at Art Deco weekend, quite acceptable. If a gentleman dressed like this said, I love your dress, uh, you, you got a conversation going. It, a lot of that goes. It's really, it's the, we call it the magic of the weekend. And if we could bottle it, We'd make an absolute fortune. I don't know what happens to people, but it, it brings them together. The, there's a lot of things happening there, but we won't have any prob trouble with people drinking too much or, or being a nuisance or anything like this. The police tell us it's one of their quietest weekends there is, you know, with the number of people you've got in town. Um, well, those are, you know, the 20s were the era of prohibition. Sure, <laughs> but we <laughs> don't have much prohibition thing. here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the police said it's because of the nature of the people that come. They're here for a good time, but it doesn't mean necessarily having a lot to drink or being a nuisance. And and we do encourage young people to come too, and generally they're very well behaved. It's really nice. One of the times I went back to the States, I was on a plane with a man from Auckland who had come down for the first time to Art Deco weekend, and he was completely beaming. Yes. He, had, he was a dancer. Oh, right. So he just spent the entire weekend dancing. dancing and meeting all these people. And I think, you know, you're an actor. Yes. It, it, you're really John Cocker. Yeah, you yeah. know, we have to let the people know you're not really Bertie Worcester. Yeah. But um, there is something about taking on a character where it allows you to do things you would not you, you normally do. do. Yes. You know, yes, indeed. be friendly with strangers and yeah, interact sure. with strangers. Indeed. Like you're saying with um, saying a woman that she has a pretty dress. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, we do have some VIPs coming. One is Shane Cortez, who's a dancer. You might have seen him on Dancing with the Stars on TV. That's exciting. And he's coming down with, I think he's with his lady. I mean, then we can end Nairi or Natalie or something like that. Anyway, I suspect that we shall have them dancing somewhere, sometime on the weekend. Because they love to dance. And, and all the music everywhere. Oh, and yes. was, the, was the amphitheater always used as part of the yes. activities? Yes, we've always tried to use it. but. The, the, since about the year 2000, uh, we've had a free concert there on Friday night, uh, and that's really wonderful. And do you know who's going to be at the concert venue this year? Uh, at the? 
at you know at the amphitheater. Oh who's yes, sure. Be there. Um, yes, we've got um, uh, the Navy Band and Dave Atkin Band as well. Excellent. And, Excellent. The, and they're also the uh, Hawks Bay Jazz Club Big Band. Over the weekend, we have two concerts there and the Strait as well. Yeah. Gorgeous. And what duties will Birdie have over Gosh, this weekend? Gosh, everything, darling. <laughs> uh, I MC a lot of stuff. So I MC the opening soiree and things like this. I dry, I, I lead the car parade in my little Austin, 1935 <laughs> Austin. And Always is it lead. yours? It is. It is, yes. yes. Um, and then my afternoon of Saturday is always thrilling because I'm the MC for both the costumes and coiffeur competition, which is always some amazing clothing, but also the bathing bells competition. Again, not quite PC today, yeah. you know, Miss Wills disappeared and all that sort of stuff. Um, but we have some wonderful outfits for that too. And I always really, really enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. And I think it's a lot of fun for the audience as well. Yes. And even more fun for the participants. <laughs> yes. And again, I have to say the amazing amount of trouble that people go to, to get it right. You know, it's fantastic. And I love to interview the, the, the clients and say, where did you get your just, oh, it's my grandmother's wedding dress or something. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, Bertie, we're going to say goodbye to you. And when we come by, we'll say hello to John Cocking, who's been waiting in the wings. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back in chat room in a minute. Welcome back to chat room. We're speaking now with John Cocking, who was a member of the Napier City Council and just ran for mayor. Yes, you indeed. did, not successfully. Uh, no. I know, but um, let's talk a little bit about your political career. First of all, when did you come to New Zealand and what brought you here? I came to New Zealand in 1982, uh, February, so I've been here uh, 32 years now. Um, and I came as, as you say, my other persona, uh, yeah. which was um, an accountant. And accountant. I actually got a job as an accountant here. Uh, and actually, uh, my first job was for Naples City Council. Was it? That was my career. I was in local government finance, both in, in England too. And where were you from in England? I originally Chesterfield in Derbyshire, but I, I moved all around the country doing various work. So did you come as a single lad or did you come no, no, with a family? No, I was married. Yeah, and you just wanted to Yes, give, give, give my family horizons. a different life. Yes, yep. and it was a good decision. Uh, the only regret I have is I didn't do it 10 years before. <laughs> So you came, you were an accountant, yes, um, and so and you did a lot of acting. Sure, it was it was it was a hobby. Um, so I, I did stuff at the repertory, um, but in 1989, uh, there, I've been here a few years. I had my own um, computer consultancy company by this time. I moved away from working for the council, uh, and um, I got the opportunity to be a professional actor, uh, which I took. That's fun. Oh, it is. It's an amazing leap from being an accountant to being an actor. Um, but I managed to reduce my salary by 75% at a stroke. Did which your wife <laughs> have to go to work? <laughs> I'm a whole team of them, completely. darling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, but it, it, it was successful in the end. You yeah. know what I mean? And I really, really enjoyed it. And I've carried on since then. So. And so what, you know, from acting, I guess from acting to politics is a natural, a natural movement. It, it was. It was. Uh, <laughs> well, look at look, you, all you, you, are look at the mayor of Invercargill. Look at you know, oh, yeah, well. look at the mayor of Christchurch. They were all uh, presenters or, or whatever. Exactly, so. exactly. And anyway, yes, I joined the council. Um, I was first elected um, two thousand and four. What uh, did you see the need? I saw it as a natural progression from doing what I was doing. I Which saw was? Bertie. I saw Bertie as a um, a promoter of the city, uh, as doing something for Napier. Uh, help helping people and giving people another dimension as it were of the city and saying here's the personal touch so uh, did you think napier was a sleepy town and needed a little bit of you know energy? no there was a, there was a really good team although the council previous council uh, previous two councils to when i got on there'd been a lot of um bickering is the best word i can use uh where there the, were the various factions on the council it didn't seem to be very together and i was very lucky to join at a time when uh, a f when it was much more a team and i must admit the whole nine years i was on i was on council uh, three three terms uh we were definitely a team uh, i interviewed uh, barbara arnett and yes. she said that was one of her ambitions as mayor was yep. to create a team so people were working together so you and that was certainly the case more. i was one of three new councillors that joined that year. So uh, um, when Barbara Arnott stepped down, you said, okay, I'm gonna take the leap and try to become mayor? Yes, yeah, so I thought I, I could uh, carry on the good work that she'd done and the way that the council worked. Um, th what we've had, of course, is the amalgamation black cloud hanging over us yes. all this time. And, and the man that became mayor, Bill Dalton, uh, was also a councillor, of course. Yep. Um, 
and I know Bill, he's a very strong man and a, and a good counsellor, um, and his s single policy was um, anti-amalgamation. And mm. I think that hit a real note with the voters. What's your position on it? Um, I don't want amalgamation. I, don't, I think it would be bad for the city. In my previous career in England, I went through um, a very large reorganisation in local government, uh, and it was very difficult for the town that I lived in. And the changes at that time would have been less than the changes we're going to get here. So I think we're in for a very difficult time. I also have not really got my head around yet why are we doing this? It's certainly government-led, in my opinion. I think it's the central government-led. No question. There's a lot of push for amalgamation. Absolutely, no question. But it's not been so successful. I mean, I know people who work in both Auckland and Wellington. Yes. And then they let too many people go, and they have to refill the positions yes. through amalgamation. So it's questionable you know, I th what I the think, savings uh, yeah, are. I think, um, and also, it, to me, it, it's been rushed. Although we, we're yet to have uh, the hearings uh, on on uh, the, the uh, proposal from the Local Government Commission, which will happen uh, oh, very soon now, uh, March or April, I think, um, and, and then the final result. I still think it's been very quick. And I think if we'd, if we'd have had a proposal that would have been done differently, rather than saying, this is it, if we'd have had a, a proposal which said, look, this might be a good idea, let's put some ideas in a pot and let's talk about it, and let's see, as a group, the, the councils and the people together, could do this rather than saying bang, 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 this is what it's going to be. I feel it would have been much easier to do that. But the proposal came out first from, from uh, Mayor Yule. I remember him giving a talk to He's the council. He's very, very pro Oh, commission. yes. Uh, and basically his original idea is what was translated into the Better Hawks Bay proposal. Um, and uh, it was like, this is what you're going to get. And I, th I feel if it had been, let's get together and let's think w w how we could make this better would have been a better approach, but whatever, it's not going to be. So what do you think are your greatest achievements as a councillor? Well, I think if you look at what the, what the, uh, the City Council did in that time, uh, we, we provided some very great infrastructure. Uh, we got reduced our debt to nothing. Uh, in, um, which we were very proud of. As an accountant, of course, that really, <laughs> <laughs> really close to my heart, as it were. But my we're in a very good financial position. Yeah, we, we kept the rates low too, um, or lowish. Um, and so I think we achieved that, we achieved a lot through working hard uh, and having an eye on everything, as it were. Uh, and I was just happy to be a member of the team that did that. And also enhancing the image internationally of Napier. Oh, gosh, yes. Well, Bertie does that all the <laughs> time, does Sorry, exactly. other face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now that, you know, you don't have your duties as a councillor, mm. um, you were unfortunately unsuccessful in your you know, bid yes. for mayor. What are you doing now? Well, um, I... When uh, you're not Bertie, of course. Well, I'm Bertie m more so, because I went back to the trust and said, I, I, here I am, plan B is, <laughs> is I'm going to be Bertie. I mean, I'm a, re I'm a retired person now, unbelievably, I know. But yes, I'm a retired person now, so I get Uncle John's salary. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so um, I said, here, I've got more time. How can I help us um, keeping on with keeping on? Uh, and, and as you probably know, we've got... we've they've, um, been given a grant to promote overseas, but not necessarily I'll go overseas, but um, one of the things I do, we have cruise ships that come in here, a lot of overseas people on cruise ships. So I go to visit the ship uh, when it arrives and when it goes, and I spend all day in town with my little car and me dressed like this, just to say to them, isn't this fabulous? What about coming back again? And what about, um, aren't you responsible for the Art Deco buses? No. No, not, not at all. What, in what way responsible? I was part of the team that said we ought to have them. Yes. But, uh, but, uh, and I did a voiceover for the commentary, which they took off uh, before the election. So it's not gone back on again. Yeah. So, yes, but they're, but they're, not Bert, they're not Bertie's buses. Yes, yes, but I read that somewhere. So I, it was yes. a mistake in reporting, which often happens. It often happens. Well, no, occasionally happens. Yes. But no, it, it might be called Bertie's buses, but I'm afraid it had no more to do with them than any other councillor. And before we go, you're also involved in the, li in the licensing commission. Can yes. Talk about that very, very, very briefly. Very quickly, yes. Well, the law changed on 18th of December uh, uh, last year, where we now have um, a district licensing committee, uh, which looks at uh, people who want to have licenses so that's for pubs, clubs, uh, off licenses, whatever. But also, I'm, I'm a community member on a team that are looking at a, a local alcohol policy. Now, this has been jointly with Hastings. We've got together and said we should have one policy about how long the bars stay open, uh, how long um, off-license stay open, should there be these rules about having...